Hey there everyone, my name is Atesh and let's get started with the iOS 13. I can understand that you are very excited about getting started with iOS 13, writing some Hello World code, but before we actually go ahead and write some of the programs and some of the amazing apps that we are about to build, it's a very good idea that first we understand about the Xcode software. Now Xcode is going to be the piece of software where we are going to spend, let's just say 90% of our time while developing apps for iOS 13. And this piece of software is a little bit different from what you have seen so far. Maybe you are coming up from the world of PyCharm, maybe uh, VS Code or any other piece of software. This is completely different from that. Although the working experience of the Xcode and its suggestion are pretty amazing, but this piece of software is so gigantic and does so many of the things that it's pretty easy to find yourself that I'm completely lost in the software. So first and foremost, before we make any app in the iOS 13, we're going to take a tour of the Xcode. So consider this video as an official tour of the Xcode and consider me as your tour guide for the Xcode. So we're going to understand how the Xcode works. But before that, I'm also going to walk you through with a couple of things that you should do first and foremost. I hope everybody is having an Apple ID. If you're watching this video and you're interested in going for the iOS 13 development as a beginner, you should have an app, uh, Apple ID. Once you have this Apple ID, go on to the page developer.apple.com and log in into your uh, Apple ID. Now, Apple ID uh, charges you $99 per year in order to maintain your app. And this is one of the reasons why almost all of the apps in the uh, iOS world is so much polished and are always almost amazing. So let's go ahead and walk through with some of the things which a beginner should know. Once you have logged in into the developer.apple.com, you're going to see an overview page. In this, we can see that we have two tabs, Certificate and the App Store Connect. Now, although we are going to talk later on about how to publish your app on the iOS 13, but the world is actually a little bit tricky in the iOS side. We get all of our certificates and profiles from developer.apple.com, but we technically upload our file on the iTunes Connect. I'm going to talk more about them later on in this series, but this is how the Apple world goes on. Now, I'm not going to open up my membership or certificate because this reveals some of the private information up here. So these are important stuff. Now, one of the point where I would like to point your attention is the documentation and the downloads. First and foremost, downloads. Now, although in most of the cases, you won't be working with the betas, but uh, sometimes when the app is uh, when the new version of the software is about to be released then sometimes we have to work on the betas so this is where you get all of your betas now right now the xcode that we are working on is fully fledgedly out out in the app store so you can download it from there but sometimes if you are a new on to the operating system uh, like ios 13 14 this is the place where you get all of your software you can see mac os catalina ios 13.1 beta ipad os tv os these are all the things where you can just click on the profile it will get you a DMG and you can just install it and all the applications are also available here. Let's go back up here and one more important information that you always should look up for is the documentation. Although in this series, I will walk you through that how to understand and read these documentation and implement them on your own application. This is the place where I'll be referring you quite a lot. So it's a good idea to bookmark at least this page documentation and we are going to talk more about them later on. So now that you know what are the web pages that you should be hanging around, uh, let's minimize this and open up our Xcode, the gigantic piece of software, uh, which is not so easy to fun. But I promise after watching this video, it will be so fun. So this is the first interface and first look. Before going into the application itself, go to the Xcode and click on the preferences. And here are all the magical stuff that goes on. First and foremost, in the general, you can uh, choose up your uh, things like how the finder and navigation all the work, but you don't need to walk through with all of them. Let me point out exactly the things which most of the time you will be needing. First and foremost, account. Sometimes in order to install some of the profiles, this is where exactly you log in with your Apple ID. So this is one important and interesting stuff. The next one is the fonts and the color. This is where you choose up your theme, your spacing, your indentation, and how much big the font that you want. You can just click up here and choose all the fonts and stuff up here. Then comes up the text editing. This is the place where you turn on and off your line numbers. 
for me it's good to point out your attention that this is where you should be looking up and in case you are not a guy who loves the four indentation space you can change it up to the two just right up here one more important stuff in this preferences is this component in the component all of your ios software are going to be up here and you can check mark for the updates and all these things now one interesting thing about the ios development is you don't need technically an iphone and you can simulate almost everything for example, if we want to work on the GPS and navigation, you don't need to get your phone and run around the street to just simulate some of the navigation part. You can do all of this uh, right from here. And we're going to walk through it later on how the uh, authentication and biometric and even the fingerprint scanner and the face ID can be done on simulated uh, in the simulators as well. So that's all what we need. Let's close them and you don't need to wo worry about most of the other thing. So let's go ahead and fire up our Xcode. So, first and foremost, there are three options on the left hand side. Get started with the playground. Playground is like a small file where you can quickly test out some of the concepts that you are working on. And the most of the time we'll be creating a new project, the second option that we'll be working. The third option is to go onto the Git repository, something like GitLab or GitHub and get a project from there and start working on that. So most of the time we are going to work on this second option. Let's go ahead and click on this second option. And as you go on to the second option, a whole bunch of applications are going to open in front of you. Single view application, game, augmented reality, and you can see a lot is here. Then uh, also we have got a watch OS, TV OS, Mac OS, cross platform, and a whole bunch of other things. Majorly, we're going to spend our time with the iOS and in the single view application because uh, all the other things like tabbed view and master detail app, these all can be achieved via the single view application. So this is where we are going to spend most of our time. Let's go ahead and click on the next. And this is where actually the most amazing stuff goes on. So first and foremost, product name. Uh, let's just say this is my first application. So I'm going to call this as uh, simply my first app. So this is what we are having. Then comes up the team. Now this is something which are gonna be used later on when we are going to profile our app and we'll upload that on the store. So you don't need to worry much about it. If you add your Apple ID account, that's great. If you don't, that's also fine. Then comes up the organization name, the company you are working on. And in case you are an individual, you can again enter up your name. Then comes up the organization identifier. This makes your app completely unique in the store because let's just say you're working on a to-do app, there can be many other to-dos. So in order to uniquely identify your app, we usually prefer a domain name in the reverse order. For example, in.learncodeonline. You can be com.ethashadri or anything like that. So this is how your app bundle identifier is going to look up for. Now, definitely you can get this information from the app itself later on as well. No big deal. Now for the language, of course, we are going to stick on to the Swift. We are never going to choose Objective-C, at least in this series. Now then comes up the major thing, which is user interface. You want to choose for Swift UI or the storyboard. Now, based on what you select, your demo files in this project are going to change drastically based on that. Most of the time, we are going to work on the Swift UI, but don't you worry, I'm going to walk you through with the storyboard profile as well and how to navigate in that as well. So, first and foremost, let's go for the Swift UI. Now, next three check marks are also important. The first one is use core data. Core data is like almost a local database in the app itself. We definitely are going to talk about this later on. So this check mark is mostly going to be turned off, except in the one section where we are going to explicitly talk about core data. And then some of the unit tests and UI testing that we can surely uh, keep them up here. And probably, just probably, we are going to talk about them a little bit later on. Let's go ahead and click on the next. And it's going to ask me that where you want to store this file. So I'm going to keep it on the iOS 13 exercise file. So since it's just a demo project i'm gonna just uh, store that here now also it gives you an option to create a git repository we're going to talk about the source control and the source management probably later on but i have a whole lot of videos and other series on that so right now we're going to just uncheck that let's go ahead and create on that now as soon as you create this project up here Xcode is going to populate your project with some of the default files which it gives you directly up here. But this is not all about it. It can be a really intimidating software with so many of the things opening up here. So first and foremost, let me give you where are the culprits. 
the culprits are usually on the right hand side to on the very top so this pane is responsible for hiding and showing up a variety of information right up here so this is something you should always watch out and look out for okay i'm gonna just close all of this now one more interesting thing just below this culprit there is another culprit uh, where you can just right click uh, not right click the left click and you can see what you really want to see show editor only or you want to have a canvas assistant layout and all of that let's click on show editor only so this is how you can get a maximum space to write all of your code on the left hand side pane you're going to see uh, that we have a whole bunch of things at the top most of the time you want to stay with the uh, very left which is the project navigator to see all of your files but we do have a lot of things uh, on to the working copies to the uh, hierarchical structure of the application some of the warnings that automatically pop up during build time or runtime and a whole bunch of things the good thing is we always want to stay on the very left hand side but as the things progress Xcode automatically switch itself onto variety of these options. So just make sure you keep an eye on this one up here. On the right hand side pane, which can be turned on and off using this, this is sensitive based on what you have selected on your application. If I'm up here, uh, it's always going to be property inspector, uh, but there are attribute inspector, but there are other things which actually goes on. So most of the time you want to stay on the very right hand side option up here. Okay, then comes up these project file, which we are going to see up in the next video that what these files are and what they do actually. So let me show you one more thing up here. So uh, I'm going to just remove this because I don't have much of the real estate. Just click up here and I want to see the canvas only. Now, if you are on the latest Mac Catalina, then you're going to see this resume option, which actually gets you that how your application is looking up. This is something drastically new for the iOS 13 development. It has never been in the iOS 11, 12, or any previous version. This gives you a right idea. Now, let me give you a spoiler up here. This Swift UI development is highly inspired by Flutter and React Native. And you're gonna see that later on in the series that how this actually works. So this is what we are having. Now, one more thing, what uh, a lot of you who are previous developer of iOS might be looking up. Hey, in this inspector, where can I see the things which I used to drag and drop? Now, this has been converted into this plus sign as you click on this plus sign. Uh, now, it gives you all the snippets and all the codes that you really want to have and you want to place up here, like buttons, groups, dates. This is now uh, shrinked into just a plus button. And you can click that again uh, to just get it away. Now, let's wait for a few seconds. Uh, so that our application actually builds up and we can see a first look of how our application is looking default way. So there we go. This is how our application is looking up and I can just uh, shrink it a little bit. There we go. Now, this is not officially the end of the tour because there is so much in the Xcode that we need to discuss and we need to talk about. So in the next video, we're going to talk about the file structure of the Xcode as well as how we can manipulate some of the things using the Xcode only and not the code part. So I think this video is already quite long. Let's go ahead and break it down into two parts. So this is officially the end of this video and let's go ahead and move on to the next one where we're going to talk more about Xcode.